Wham, bam, Tesla cam. I hope you're satisfied. Eric was driving his Tesla Model S to work in Oldham County. He slammed on the brakes when traffic suddenly came to a stop, and the Toyota in front of him rear-ended another Toyota ahead of it. Eric also became involved in the pileup after he rear-ended the RAV4 in front of him, but the wreck wasn't over yet. A trucker swerved into Eric's lane and hit him from behind, pushing him into the vehicles in front of him. Eric isn't sure why the trucker didn't use the shoulder instead of swerving into a traffic lane. In total, six vehicles were involved in the collision, but the Tesla definitely took the brunt of the impact. Firefighters and paramedics responded first, followed by the police. Incredibly, nobody was hurt, but the damage done to the vehicles involved was severe. The Tesla was jammed between the semi-truck and the Jersey barrier, so the semi had to be moved sideways to extract the Tesla. Every lane of the highway was shut down while the police tried to escort six tow trucks to the scene to clear the vehicles off the road. The rims on Eric's Tesla were literally shattered by the force of the impact and he feared his car wasn't going to be easily repaired. The Tesla was dragged onto a flatbed tow truck and that's when Eric could finally see the full extent of the damage. The back end of the Tesla had been crushed by the semi, but somehow its structural integrity had still protected Eric from any injuries. His Tesla is most likely totaled, although Eric hasn't heard back from his insurance provider yet. He did hear back from the police when they sent him a copy of the police report. It's pretty interesting to see who the police found responsible for the whole thing. Do you think you know who the police found to be at fault? Post your guess in the comments and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. First, we've got more crazy videos to show you, so hold on tight. This anonymous Tesla owner had his Model X vandalized in a parking garage in Redmond, Washington. It appeared to be a random act, but he doesn't know for sure, so that's why he wanted to remain anonymous. Sentry mode was triggered when a masked individual appeared in front of the car. He was hiding something under his shirt before he pulled out a pair of rubber gloves. He walked up to the side of the Tesla and started pouring something all over the roof before calmly walking away. When our submitter returned to his car, he discovered what the mystery liquid was. The vandal had poured a bucket of white paint all over his car, which then dripped down into the door seals. The Tesla owner contacted the police and building security and sent them copies of this video. The police took the matter seriously, but weren't able to identify the criminal from the video. Our submitter asked anyone who can identify this criminal to contact the Redmond police, or you can send us a message and we'll pass the information along. Dan was driving down a highway in Scotts Valley, California. Traffic on the other side had been stopped for over an hour for a collision with a semi-truck. One truck driver had been waiting long enough and made a U-turn across the highway. Dan wasn't sure his car would stop in time, so he swerved to the left and threaded the needle. Like a glove? Miles was driving his Model Y in Champaign, Illinois. The road he was on split into two lanes up ahead, and the truck in front of him moved to the right while Miles kept cruising in the left lane. Miles assured us he had no previous interaction with this truck driver and had never seen it before, so he honestly wasn't paying much attention to it. The truck seemed to be smoking as the driver slowed down and allowed Miles to catch up. Once he did, the driver matched his speed, putting the two vehicles side by side. Up ahead, traffic in the left lane had slowed down, so Miles decided to back off and merge behind the truck so he could be in the lane that was moving faster. For some reason, the truck driver brake checked Miles and kept slowing him down. Miles had no idea what was going on, so he returned to the left lane to go around him. Suddenly, the truck driver told Miles he thinks Miles is number one. Wow, what a nice guy! He obviously felt strongly about this because he kept his finger up for a very long time while his truck huffed and puffed black smoke. What followed is one of the most intense staring competitions I've ever seen. Cue up the dramatic music, please. Wow, that was intense. After gazing wistfully into Miles' eyes, the truck driver gave one final salute before Miles sped away. Andreas was turning left below an overpass when he suddenly heard the echo of a loud engine roaring. 
Phew, that was a close one. The roaring Andreas heard was actually from a Dodge Viper, whose driver had attempted a drift under the overpass. He almost hit Andreas, who told us he wasn't impressed by this maneuver, but he's glad his Tesla wasn't damaged by the Viper driver's mating display. Actually, one of our Patreon supporters, The Wolfric, noted on our private Discord server that this Viper is actually the higher-end ACR model. And disabling a Viper's traction control isn't recommended unless you really know what you're doing. We'll let you decide for yourself if you think this particular driver knew what he was doing. Kirby's wife was leaving a McDonald's drive-thru when a truck pulling a trailer stopped in front of her. She thought he might have been preparing for a complicated maneuver, so she stopped and left him plenty of room. Suddenly, the 78-year-old driver of a Toyota minivan slowly backed into the right rear door of the Tesla. I don't know why, but watching this video made me sad. When Kirby's wife spoke with the minivan driver, she said she never uses mirrors or backup cameras while reversing. She just backs up until her backup sensors start beeping, and this time, they never did. They filed an insurance claim, and the minivan driver admitted she was at fault. The car spent three weeks in a Tesla-approved shop where they replaced the door, which cost over 10,000 US dollars. Nimbus was driving to work one morning when the Lexus driver in front of him suddenly braked hard for stopped traffic. Nimbus also hit the brakes and was able to stop in time. The driver of the Ford behind him also managed to stop just in time, but the Toyota driver behind him didn't. Thankfully for Nimbus and for his Tesla, the Ford driver had steered to the right when braking, so when it was hit from behind by the Toyota, it was pushed out into the grass median instead of into the back of the Tesla. When traffic cleared up, Nimbus continued to work since the drivers appeared to be okay and determining fault in the collision wouldn't be very difficult. JC was driving down a highway in Bellflower, California. He was cruising in the carpool lane in the middle of the night when he suddenly saw the silhouette of an object in the middle of his lane. He'd encountered a wild couch on the highway. Thankfully, the lane on his right was clear and he was able to dodge around the couch. We've heard it's cozy in the carpool lane, but a couch in the highway is taking things just a bit too far. Jason, whose last name happens to be Couch, <laughs> It's almost like we intentionally put these videos in an order that makes sense. Anyway, Jason was on his way to pick up his son after work. He was driving next to a truck, but something about it made him feel uneasy, so he decided to pass it. After he did, he heard a very low tone noise, loud enough to be heard over his music, and watched this happen in his side view mirror. Jason couldn't stop as he needed to pick up his son, shout out to Caleb, but he did send a copy of his video to the San Antonio Police Department. It didn't look like any other vehicles were involved and Jason didn't see anything on the news about it. Brian had parked his three-week-old Model 3 on the street in Wilmot, Illinois when Sentry Mode was activated by another Tesla Model 3 approaching from the other side of the street. The Tesla driver pulled into a driveway before backing up to turn around. In the process, she backed into Brian's car, but instead of sticking around or leaving a note, she drove off. We can't see how she could have failed to notice the impact, especially considering the light show that followed. Thankfully, Sentry Mode had captured her license plate clear as day, and she was located shortly after Brian called the police. An officer sat in Brian's Tesla and watched the footage for himself, confirming the obvious collision. The officer told Brian that the other driver denied hitting his Tesla and claimed Sentry Mode had been triggered by mistake. You'll be satisfied to know she was arrested and cited for leaving the scene of a collision, better known as hit and run. Nate and his wife were driving their Model Y on I-77 toward Charlotte to get it serviced at the Charlotte Tesla Service Center. Despite traffic moving pretty fast, about 80 miles per hour down a highway with a 70 mile per hour speed limit, they noticed a white Model 3 speeding past everyone else before pulling up behind and tailgating a car in the passing lane. Shortly after, Nate noticed a South Carolina Highway Patrol trooper approach and begin following the Model 3. About a minute passed before Nate saw them again, and this time the trooper's lights were on and the Model 3 was getting pulled over. About an hour later, they made it to the service center. Right after they'd parked, the same Model 3 pulled up behind them. In spite of their aggressive driving, Nate and his wife still beat them to the service center. I guess slow and steady wins the race after all. Charity was driving her Model X to work one early morning. 
The full self-driving beta was enabled when the car suddenly started beeping and braking hard. At first, she thought this was due to the oncoming car that was stopping in the middle of the road, so she stepped on the juice pedal. Suddenly, she saw a man in the road about five feet ahead of her. The car was already braking and swerving all on its own by the time Charity realized what was happening. Charity wanted to thank her husband for helping her get a Tesla. Otherwise, her trip to work could have ended very differently for her and for the man in the road. Jason was driving in Richmond, Virginia, when a vehicle pulling a trailer lost a wheel on the driver's side. A following Jeep ran over the wheel and sent it flying past Jason. The Jeep's tire immediately went flat and both vehicles pulled over on the shoulder. The loose wheel bounced past Jason. Thankfully, it doesn't look like it hit any other vehicles. Jason wanted to shout out his son Micah. While Edward was driving home after picking up his youngest son Elon, this stereotypical Florida driver went driving down the wrong side of the road. Edward told us his oldest son EJ has been watching Wham Bam since before they even owned a Tesla. I wonder if he's jealous that his little brother is the one who got to send in this submission. Stu was driving on Route 22 in Branchburg, New Jersey when a parade of wrong-way drivers suddenly appeared right in front of him. This happened in the broad daylight of a clear day on a very straightforward stretch of roadway, so we have no idea how so many people made the same mistake. Thankfully, all of the wrong-way drivers seemed to bail out into the grass median before any collisions occurred. Stu's theory is that the three drivers were in a convoy together and the lead driver led the other two astray. If that's the case, they definitely need a new leader. Okay, detective, let's take a look at the police report from our first video, formerly referred to as the Kentucky Uniform Police Traffic Collision Report Narrative. First, we need to clarify what all these units in the report mean. Unit 1 is the Toyota RAV4 that was in front of Eric. Unit 2 is the Toyota Avalon that the RAV4 rear-ended. Unit 3 is Eric's Tesla Model S. Unit 4 is the Freightliner Columbia 120, the semi-truck that rear-ended Eric's Tesla. Unit 5 is an Acura MDX. And Unit 6 is a Ford Transit van. Okay, here's how the police recorded the event. Unit 2 was slowing in heavily congested traffic on I-71 southbound after exit 14. Unit 2 slowed to a stop and was struck by Unit 1 who was following Unit 2 in traffic. Unit 3 was following Unit 1 and struck Unit 1 after Unit 1 became stopped in the roadway. Units 1, 2, and 3 were all traveling in the left-hand lane. Unit 4, semi-tractor and trailer, swerved into left-hand lane to avoid slowing traffic and struck Unit 3 pushing Unit 3 into Unit 1 for a second collision between the two units. Unit 4, after striking Unit 3 in a sideswiping manner, also struck Unit 1. In the course of swerving into left-hand lane, Unit 4 collided against Unit 5, who was traveling in the left-hand lane. Unit 5 was caught between Unit 4 and a concrete barrier. Unit 6 was traveling behind Unit 5 and collided with Unit 5 when Unit 5 was struck and stopped in the left-hand lane. End of report. Did you get all that? When all was said and done, the police found the driver of Unit 1, the Toyota RAV4 that Eric had hit, at fault for the whole thing. The RAV4 driver was cited for following too closely. No other drivers were found responsible or cited for any infractions. Well, how'd you do? Did you guess correctly or do you think the cops got it wrong? EJ, just ask your dad to drive you around Florida a little more. It shouldn't take long for you to capture some crazy drivers. If you missed our Worst Drivers of Florida video on the Wham Bam Dashcam channel, we put a link to it over here. We know you don't like being told what to do, so don't click on the link. We're sure you don't want to see how bad Florida drivers can be. 